People tell us every week that our information has helped save their life. If you agree that this is helpful information, please like, share, and most of all, subscribe because nothing makes a channel like subscriptions. There are definitely some treatments. The main standby treatment is rate control. If you have heart rate above 110, you need rate control with atrial fibrillation. And that's done with beta blocker type medications like metoprolol or something like that, or a calcium channel blocker like diltiazem or, or the like. Besides rate control, you also need your blood to be thinned. You need something that's a blood thinner to help that thrombus not form and help you not have the stroke. There's older medicines like Coumadin and aspirin. Coumadin was proven to be superior to aspirin in prevention of stroke, but it had some bleeding problems. So they came up with some more direct anticoagulants such as Eliquis and Xarelto and Pradaxa. Those medications are as good or better than Coumadin in preventing stroke. And some of them are better than Coumadin as far as not having bleeding, but you can get major bleeding with any of those. Combining those with aspirin is not a good idea. There's much more chance of bleeding either intracranially or intra-abdominally. And so it's not a good idea to combine those things. I see some people talking about ablation that is something in the right context that is a good treatment. An electrophysiologist can go into your heart with a catheter and they can either cryoablate it or they can ablate it with heat with cautery. For long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation, it's not necessarily the best thing. The probably is just to control rate and to control to thin the blood. There's also other things that have been FDA approved and there are these little devices that they can put in through surgery and they can basically close off your atrial appendage and they either they burn your atrial appendage and scar it together or they put a little device it's like a little box that that closes off your atrial appendage where blood doesn't go in it and that will stop you from having a stroke because the blood doesn't pool anymore however they only recommend that if you're already going to have open heart surgery for something else like a bowel problem or something like that uh, because it's a little bit extreme to go in and put a device inside your heart where you could just take a medicine and, and slow your rate and stuff like that. For instance, Karima asked this question, but I'm sure for those who have been diagnosed with AFib, should it be a cardiologist that's treating them or do you feel comfortable with the primary care physician paying close attention, can treat and maintain, manage atrial fibrillation? Primary doctors can definitely treat atrial fibrillation. The, the time to go to a cardiologist is if it's unstable, if it's not responding to treatment, if the rate is unstable or if there are other heart problems that are causing the atrial fibrillation such as coronary artery disease or a valve problem that probably means you need to go to the cardiologist for those other reasons and then they would take care of your atrial fibrillation as well used to we would admit every person that had atrial fibrillation to the hospital and we would anticoagulate them with lovenox and then we would bridge their therapy to coumadin but it's not something that you have to get admitted to the hospital anymore more with the newer anticoagulants. You can start those and start the rate control and, and you don't really have to be in the hospital for that. And the one that went to the ER and they had paroxysmal AFib, they should definitely be seeing a primary doctor about that, but not necessarily a cardiologist unless it's unstable.